Hi! In this video, I'm going to talk to you about how to get unshakable confidence on the Ultimate Frisbee Field. And this will work for you even if you've already read all the books on mental toughness training. Um, so I want you to think back to your most recent important Ultimate game. Uh, how did you feel during that game? Were you excited? And were you eager to get in the field and show off your skills? Or were you more nervous than you wanted to be? Did you want to be the one that was responsible for the outcome of the game or of certain plays? Or were you secretly hoping that someone else on the team would take over, make the big play, help turn things around, or take the hard matchup on the field? The sad truth is if you're not confidently wanting to be on the field or near the disc when the pressure is on in an important game, then you're actually being a liability to your team when it matters most. Confidence is hugely important in your ability to execute, um, and you can tell uh, about your confidence and how you feel about these certain things. Do you want the big matchups in high pressure games? What if you could play confidently all the time? And what if you could be dependable when your team needed you most? Might that have made a difference in your most recent season? Um, and then just how would you feel as a, as a player and your ability to express your skills? So what if you could play with confidence, no matter who's watching, no matter what the situation is, high pressure or not, and improve your ultimate game in just 15 minutes a day, even if you can't get to the gym or the field right now? Is this something that would be exciting to you? Hopefully the answer is yes. Um, just quick uh, intro to myself, in case you're not familiar with me, my name is Melissa Whitmer, and um, I started the Ultimate Athlete Project which many people are familiar with for its fitness programs because I was a far better athlete in my 30s than I was in my 20s and then that became the basis of the program that I built for others. So I've helped thousands of athletes reach their athletic potential and the reason that the Ultimate Athlete Project works so well is that we really um, rely on science and best practices. We are not into fads, fitness fads, um, just really focused on the science. And then lately I've been coaching more intermediate and elite level athletes that are looking to level up uh, their ultimate game. And um, But using not just fitness, but other stuff. Anyway, about my programs, a uh, common refrain is that uh, there's better results than I thought possible with less effort than I expected. And that's also um, something that applies to all our programs. It's going to apply to this confidence thing that we're talking about here too. So in the athletes that I've um, coached about confidence issues and leveling up their frisbee games, here's just some quick things that have happened. So um, one client would have described herself as a basket case, basically when it came to how she was thinking about herself and her confidence. And then after we worked together, um, she said, I play much more confidently under pressure. I mean, it was night and day um, results. Um, another client said, I would not have considered myself very good on D, but got put on the D line by the team, not his choice. Uh, and then after working together, I got my first layout D. I can get clean blocks on a regular basis, even if I don't understand where they're coming from. Another client, I had imposter syndrome issues, affected me on and off the field. And uh, after working together, um, during a call said, if you would have told me a few months ago that I'd be working out consistently six days a week, I would have thought you were crazy. So, um, you know, that last one may not seem related to the first one, but um, I think it's important in how our um, brains think about ourselves as athletes or not determines whether we're actually working out or not. So what exactly are we doing? Um, again, we're using science and best practice with the most powerful training tool we have. And it's something that most of us carry with us wherever we go. Uh, even if you happen to end up in quarantine in a closet with just a laptop and your cat, you can do this training because we are talking about mental training using um, the brain. And so just a quick uh, um, lesson. So we, our brain is kind of has two parts. So it has sort of the part on the um, top or in the front, and it's kind of described as the conscious part of the brain. Sometimes I'll call it the verbal brain. It does things on purpose. It's where we do conscious thinking and deciding. It's very logical and it's a verbal, so I can explain what it knows in words. And then we've got the other part of the brain. It's kind of in the back or in the bottom. And um, this is really the brain that controls everything in sports. So it does things on autopilot. Uh, so it controls habits. Um, and it uh, controls motor skills, learning, and execution. It's the thing that's connected to, um, uh, to our um, motor neural pathways. Uh, and it controls habits and belief systems, 
uh, it's a nonverbal, so it can't tell you what it knows. Uh, you can't have total conscious awareness of what your nonverbal brain knows. And the nonverbal brain is the part that really does control everything in sports because it also controls fast decision making based on pattern recognition, which is really what Frisbee Game IQ is all about. And this is important for confidence because, again, it's where our belief systems lie. It's where our beliefs about ourselves are. Um, and, uh, you know, and then it also controls habits, which is how we express our belief systems. So mental training is really mostly about just learning to respect and use the correct brain for the correct job. Now, um, if you can get the nonverbal brain to be on your side, it's as if the results that you want in your life are appearing on auto autopilot. And it feels that way because, again, the nonverbal brain is not sort of the conscious part of the brain. Um, and sometimes it kind of feels like things are happening by magic because we're not consciously aware of the learning or the execution of what's going on. It's all happening in the non-conscious part. So again, what the nonverbal brain can do for you is it executes habits that supports your goals. So things like physical training, anything that you do um, habitually. It solves problems that our conscious brain can't solve. It's very good at pattern recognition and picking up on things we might not be consciously aware of. Uh, it makes feel, on just field decisions based on patterns, same thing. And it forces us to act in line with our belief systems, which, you know, if we're talking about confidence, this is kind of the one that's most applicable um, for you. So um, for every player that I've worked with that's trying to get to the next level of play, they've needed mental training. They've needed mental toughness training because if you don't believe you belong at the next level of play, then you won't allow yourself to execute your skills at that level of play. So there's a lot of self-sabotage that can happen with, um, you know, losing confidence or kind of spiraling out or just not having the skills hold up under pressure. Um, and that's, so that's related to the nonverbal brain and how it thinks about itself or you. <laughs> so, so, you know, you may have heard some of this before, you know, especially if you've been reading mental toughness training books, if you've had these issues for um, a while, um, some of these concepts may be familiar with you. And I've had many clients who have come in having already read a lot. But it's not about the reading. Uh, you may intellectually understand some of this stuff, but it's really about the practice because what we need to do is we need to actually train the nonverbal brain. Just like you need to physically train, and knowing about strength training doesn't give you strength, knowing about mental training doesn't give you mental strength. So these are some of the difficulties that folks have with mental training and why I think so many people are capable of reading books about it and then having it not show up as a real difference in their lives, which is unfortunate. So, you know, I think you need more than just tips and tricks and mental reset gimmicks. So these things, I think, help, at least temporarily. So things like that would be like, um, you know, I've heard of players like if you make a mistake, you know, turn your hat sideways or like do something physical to kind of mentally reset yourself. And that's not a terrible idea, but it's you need more than that. Mental training is more than just that. And I think sometimes some of the popular um, conception of mental training, or even in books, the topics seem to be about distracting the nonverbal brain, or ignoring the nonverbal brain, or trying to combat our feelings, uh, things like that. And that method doesn't really um, work as well. So uh, the other difficulty with mental training is that because we're dealing with a nonverbal brain, which can't tell you what it's <laughs> thinking about or what it knows, uh, it's challenging to know in your own brain what your nonverbal brain is, is doing. Um, but someone outside of you, um, an external person, can help you see your own thoughts more objectively, right? Because your nonverbal brain is still connected to your conscious brain, um, you know, in some ways. And so sometimes we think that whatever the nonverbal brain is thinking, that's just absolutely, that's like reality. It becomes our reality. Um, someone outside of us can kind of um, help us realize where we are thinking about things in ways that are not as helpful or useful uh, and can help us see the error in our own thinking better than we can ourselves because we're too close. Uh, and then also mental rewiring takes time. So if you can't see um, or if you can't form a habit of mental training, you're not going to see the big results, right? So you can use some of those small tips and tricks to get you some results, but you're not going to see the really big shifts that are necessary, especially if you're trying to do things like be a player that's reliable um, in high pressure situations or make a higher level team or iron your like starting spot on the field. If you're trying to make big shifts um, 
you want to have a habit of mental training to support you as you do that. Okay, so what we do differently is, you know, we really emphasize working with the nonverbal brain, not against it. So we don't want to ignore whatever the nonverbal brain is thinking or feeling. Instead, we pay attention and we help it. So, um, so we do more than just coping mechanisms to deal with nonverbal brain things. This would also like negative self-talk is a big one here. That's uh, that is that is kind of verbal, but it's coming from the nonverbal brain belief system. So we don't ignore that. We um, we become more aware of it. Um, and we get the nonverbal brain kind of on our side. And so again, that's how the results come. Uh, they feel like they come without thinking. And so what we do differently is we offer a system of mental training that's easy to use. And you know, so you know exactly what to do, which I think is where a lot of the books tend to fall short is uh, you might understand the concepts, but not be sure what to do on a, uh, like every day. And then we get you noticeable results within two to three weeks. And I think this is crucial. Um, so you will see noticeable results in your, on the field or in your mood within two to three weeks. And seeing results in that amount of time is what helps you to be motivated to continue and to continue to build that habit that's going to last you for a long time. You're also going to get regular coaching and mentorship as you level up into being a new player um, or just like the better version of yourself as a player, even if you don't want to play at a higher level, if you just want to feel better about how you're playing and how you're showing up for your team on the field and off. Um, the regular coaching and mentorship allows you to take that to a deeper level, stay consistent, and build a habit that's going to last you for life. So the basic system, you know, we start with short video explanations of mental training exercises that we give you so you know exactly what to do. You practice it throughout the week. So you're not learning about mental training. You are doing the mental training. And you're doing it um, easily every day because it only takes a few minutes. And then you're getting coaching on it so that you can dive deeper and gain more expertise. And now by the end of the, um, the end of time working together, you're going to have a full arsenal of mental training tools and have a habit of using them effectively on a regular basis. And that's what makes all the difference. So, you know, again, what you can expect, you can expect to be ready to execute in a high pressure situations, um, be confident in the skills you have, uh, no matter who's watching or what's going on. You can improve your ultimate game uh, in just 15 minutes a day. Uh, you know, and even if you can't get to the gym or the field, whether it's, um, you know, related to the current world situation or just um, off season or, you know, whatever's going on. This is something you can do anywhere, anytime. Okay. So this is a good fit for you. If you, you know, already have tried mental toughness training in the past, but have struggled to really implement it, make a habit of it, this is going to be great for you. Um, if you feel like you have more potential on the ultimate field than what you're currently showing, due to um, negative self-talk or lack of confidence or just, you know, you're just not performing consistently, this is a good fit for you. Um, and if you want to feel more confident in high pressure situations and be a reliable teammate when it matters most, this is definitely a good fit for you. So if this is something you want, uh, the next step for you is to um, book a call and you can do that from the button on this page. And then on the call, I'm just going to learn a lot more about you as an individual and your goals and your current situation just to see where you're at and see if, the, if I can help you. And I'll answer any questions you have about the program. I can also describe some of these things in more detail um, and explain some of the concepts if you want. And if it seems like a good fit, then we'll take the next steps in working together and to help you build that unshakable shakable confidence that you were looking for, um, along with much, much more. So yeah, that's it. Book a call and I will see you there.